Welcome to the Feeding for Lamb Survival webinar, part two. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David Brown and I work for Farm Advisory Home Sackett. So Feeding for Lamb Survival, does it pay? I've done a bit of work to try and figure this question out, but I just want to make it clear up front that uh, I'm not trying to answer the question with issues like ewe survival, fleece value effects on the progeny, or the fleece value effects on the ewe in mind. Feeding for lamb survival, the modelling at a glance. Now I'm just going to walk you through this quickly so you're vaguely aware of what we're looking at and what assumptions we're using. So we're looking specifically at day 100 to day 150. So if your sheep lay within this period and you're wondering whether you should be feeding them off, this, this webinar is for you. So we're going to be looking at survival response to maternal weight. Uh, when I say maternal weight, that is the change, the weight or the change in weight of the ewe, uh, excluding the uh, growing fetus with inside her. And we're assuming from the past work that we're going to get a 1.7% 1 1 increase in survival per kilogram of maternal weight and unscanned ewes and a 3% per kilogram of maternal twins. So we're going to look at either feeding to prevent weight loss or prevent weight loss plus gain some weight. We're going to be using barley, um, that's 11 megajoules of energy per kilogram as fed. We're throwing in a 10% wastage rate. We're going to increase the cost of the barley by 25% to cater for the labour required to get it out. So that means at $200 a tonne, but barley is going to come to about 2.7 cents per megajoule of metabolizable energy. So the U energy requirements that we're looking at are 12.2 megajoules of metabolizable energy per day. That's in 100% scanned twins and 11.1 megajoules of energy a day in unscanned ewes. So that unscanned mob is resembling roughly 10% dry ewes, 50% single bearing ewes and 40% twins. Uh, we're assuming that the pasture energy supply was about set, 6 megajoules of metabolizable energy per day. And lastly, a key part of the modelling is that grain prices are cheap and we're assuming the surplus sheep sales are fairly good. We're putting $90 on our weathers $120 on our ewe hoggets and $120 on our cull for age ewes. So these generate the income from feeding for increased lamb survival in our ewes. So there's one important concept here and that's the 1 to 1.7 rule. This means that for every 70% of extra energy is required to gain versus maintain one kilogram of weight. For example, if you want your ewes to gain five kilos, it will take 70% more energy than if you wanted your ewes to simply prevent a five kilogram loss. So, on to the results. Returns on maintaining maternal live weight in twin bearing ewes is excellent, but it becomes more marginal for mobs of unscanned ewes. This graph, and in the coming graphs, I've extracted the most certain variables to explore whether feeding for lamb survival is worthwhile in your business. I figured landed feed prices, which are on the bottom axis, are something that will vary between businesses based on your distance from the source. Um, on the left hand axis we have return on investment. This is a handy financial yardstick to help us measure the returns between competing investments on farm. Remember your target return on investment should be around about that 15 to 25 percent there may be competing investment options in your business that could generate better returns than this, thus feeding for lamb survival. We should be looking at at least these sorts of returns. Now the red dotted line at the bottom of the graph there depicts what we call maybe your target or hurdle return on investment. The blue and green sloping lines show us what returns we could expect for feeding for lamb survival alone in twin and unscanned ewes with the two assumptions of the amount of paternal live weight loss prevented and the associated increase in lamb survival stated on the graph. What line you look at is going to be determined whether you're used, or scanned or not. So here that you can see that if we were to prevent a nine kilogram weight loss in the last trimester, which would come about if we had a pasture at six only supplying 6 ME of energy per day and we can 
increased lamb survival by 3% per kilogram of live weight saved, or, or maybe in the, U, in the twin bearing use, 26%, we're going to be generating excellent returns on the feeding investment right up to $300 uh, per tonne of barley landed on farm. However, for the unscanned ewes uh, on the same pasture, we're going to be preventing a seven kilogram weight loss in the last trimester. Um, if we are achieving the 1.7% increase in lamb survival per kilo, which over this uh, uh, amount of weight loss in this time period will equate to a 12% increase in overall lamb survival, then the returns are good at the lower grain prices, but as you can see, they become increasingly marginal from about $260 per tonne for barley delivered on farm. So this graph here is the exact same graph as the last one, except one key aspect of the modelling has been changed. Ewes have not just been fed to prevent maternal live weight loss, but also to gain some maternal live weight. And returns on gaining maternal live weight are less and marginal in unscanned mobs. The key reason for this is that gaining live weight is far less efficient, remember our 1 to 1.7 rule, than preventing weight loss. So here we've obviously prevented the uh, nine kilo weight loss and seven kilo weight loss in the scanned and unscanned use respectively. But we've also tried to gain three kilograms in the last trimester for both of those mobs. And what you see there is the minimum return on assets managed is not being reached, in particular for the unscanned mob from about $220 per tonne landed. Returns are still good though for the um, for the twin bearing ewes. So there's no point I can expect a Queensland pastoralist to be out there with their kitchen scales making sure that every ewe only gets gets what she needs. But I do expect this graph here to drive home the key message that feeding from, to maintain live weight is more economically viable than to feed to gain weight. This automatically means to feed a little and early in your flocks, not a lot and late. However, if the production feeding could have other benefits, especially if you're at very low U condition scores at the moment, um, and then you may be able to prevent uh, U mortality, especially during the uh, lambing phase of the year. So the key messages thus far, scanned, feed scanned mobs of twin ewes have generated a lot higher returns, and feed to maintain, not to gain weight, but the returns are still pretty good in twins. Returns and landed grain prices above $260 a tonne start to become quite marginal in unscanned mobs. Up next is part three, the modelling, other variables.